What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to 7 Star Fitness. I'm Keegan and this is the Deep Dive. And before we get started, if you have not subscribed yet, please hold up, take a minute, head down there, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified of all the future content. I know it's annoying when us YouTubers have to do that sort of thing, but if we don't ask, y'all ain't gonna do it. So... We good? We good? I'm just gonna take it on faith here. I'm gonna take it on faith. All right, let's get into it. This was a question in the Daily Simple Questions thread on our fitness on Reddit. Uh, and this question comes from Postmodern Prick. Uh, and he asks, or she, how do I make the most of personal training? I just started getting one hour personal training three days a week. I'm 6'1", 160 pounds, male. Okay, so male. I didn't read this question before I did this, clearly. Hey, gotta react live. It's all about that live reaction, right? Uh, with no athletic background. Uh, I'm really hoping to make a change and I'm wondering if there's anything I can do to get the most out of the process and if there's anything I should look out for. Thanks. This one's interesting because I feel like it's really worth talking about what it is that makes for a good experience with a personal trainer a lot of people go into it with varying degrees of an understanding as to what actually goes into the whole process what it's all about what they're going to find how, what it's going to be like and so this would be a good opportunity to really just clear it all up this is all under the assumption that you have already done your due diligence and decided and you know found out that the person that you are going to be working with is a person of high quality they're a good trainer they're qualified they're reputable they're experienced they're knowledgeable they know how to get you where you want to go they know what it is that you know they're dealing with when it comes to you so you've already done that vetting process so we're kind of going into this assuming that so if you have that going for you already that's perfect but if you don't have that definitely get that under control and there are some resources online I'll actually uh, link to one that I saw actually here on reddit which was pretty good I thought uh, that does help kind of figure out what you should look for in a good trainer and how to figure out if the trainer is a right fit for you if you're feeling a little lost on that so these are the five points as far as I'm concerned to make the most out of a personal training experience so the first one pretty easy patience you're going to have to be patient this is a process that's going to take some time this is a journey that is going to go for an extended period uh, when a lot of people approach a personal trainer it's to usually remedy some sort of physical situation that has taken years to build up you know it will take a significant period of time to undo that damage that you've done to yourself metabolically physiologically whatever it is and it's not just going to happen in a couple of weeks and you've also chosen this trainer for a reason and as a result you are going to want to keep with them for the long haul so you can actually see your goals through ask yourself this if you really want to hop off and leave your trainer after say a, a couple weeks four weeks 12 weeks whatever it is some short period of time ask yourself this question i was doing this on my own before was it working why is it going to work now if it didn't then piece number two diligence it is important that when you go into the personal training experience you're not thinking that this person is going to be putting the whole process on cruise control for you and just letting it ride out that's not what this is it's a f it's guidance we are going to help guide you towards your goal but we can't do the walking for you you gotta do the journey yourself you have to put in the work so you know we'll often give you things to do on days where you're not with us because quite frankly this person is doing three days a week three day work three days a week is very minimal as far as i'm concerned if you really want to make any significant changes you're probably going to have to do this more than that i'd say five days a week is a pretty solid place to start in terms of like getting activity in though the five days a week is a good amount of activity to get in uh, if we can do six beautiful but of course this is all dependent on you know the person's work schedule rest schedule there's some factors to to come into play yes but when it comes down to it three days is not a lot to see any significant change 
So you're going to get homework, especially with a schedule like that. You're going to get homework. You're going to get things you should do outside of the gym. Uh, and it's going to be important for you to take that on seriously. And even though you're not with the trainer at that time, to put in the effort that is required of you, that is asked of you, that comes with you know, being with a trainer or not comes with this whole journey. You have to be willing to put in the work whether the trainer is there or not. That's not just for the actual fitness side, it's for the nutrition side, it's for rest, it's for everything. If you have something you've got to get done, if they put it down for you to do it because they know it's going to benefit you and this is what's going to get you where you need to go, there's a reason you ask them to help you on this journey. Get it done. Go and get it done. That's it. Period. Next one. Be open. Now, I say this when comfortably knowing full well we've already talked about the fact that we should have vetted this person already. So we know that this is the kind of individual we can trust to have our best interest at heart. If these people really are looking out for us and we've already made sure that they are worth their weight, worth their salt, so to speak, then we know that we can trust in the process that they're laying out for us. If you're closed to the process that they're going to then provide for you to get to where you want to go, you're not going to get anything out of it and it's going to make them wonder why you chose them in the first place. It's, it's a baffling experience to work with an individual who is not listening to the recommendations. I mean, there's one thing to ask a question in an attempt to understand better what it is that this is supposed to do so that you can further your understanding of fitness and yourself in this process so that you can really be invested in it both mentally, physically, emotionally, and just feel like you're really part of it. That's cool. I get that all the time and I love answering those questions. But to get questioned in a way that attempts to undermine that which you have created as their plan, that which is your guidance, it's frustrating for the trainer and it really just raises a lot of questions as to what this relationship is supposed to be, what this process is supposed to be, what you thought you were doing when you hired that individual in the first place. Everything feels like it doesn't fit and it just it's not the kind of thing that I feel like works out long term for anybody. This next point, I cannot stress how important it is. Communicate. You have to communicate with your trainer. When it comes to getting results for a client, there's an art when it comes to it because you're still dealing with a person and a person is a very dynamic, changing, shifting, undulating being. It's a constant series of adjustments to keep things moving in the right direction. Communicate with the trainer. Communicate with the person you're working with. It allows them a window into what's going on with you so they can understand how things are playing out. If they see deviations, if they see something is not working, something isn't going the way it's supposed to, it can be switched up. It can be changed out. If you're not enjoying an exercise, that plays a part in things. If you don't like something, you will not comply with it as readily as you would with something you do enjoy. Pretty simple, right? If you don't like something, you may not try as hard during it because you're not really a fan of it. That lack of effort put into it leads to less gotten out of it, meaning less progress, meaning the whole program isn't having the impact it should. Even with nutrition, when we have slip ups, if we don't know you're slipping up, we can't help you get back on track. We can't give you strategies to deal with that slip up in the future. There is no way to plan around this. We are just flying blind. But if you communicate to us, we can then provide you the insight we have of, from all of our experience, from all of the time we spent working with other people, with doing these sorts of things ourselves. All of that can then be used to benefit you but only if we know that you need that knowledge. Otherwise, we could just throw knowledge at you and hope it's what you need, but we'll never know if we've hit the mark. So communicate, communicate and communicate honestly. The last one, be realistic. Every so often, I'll work with a client who has some absolutely just ridiculous goal, like I'd like to put on 20 pounds of muscle in three weeks or five weeks or eight weeks. Really? I'd like to lose 40 pounds of fat in two months. 
Really? First of all, why? Also, no, that's just, that's not how any of this works. I just, I can't, I don't know what else to tell you. That's not how this works. You can't just do that. Not safely anyways. We could do that, yes, but it will compromise you. It will be a very difficult and a very problematic thing. It will not lead to anything positive in terms of nutrition or exercise habits. Not something I can endorse as a, as a trainer and really as a human being. Just morally, as, as someone who understands what that's going to lead to, I couldn't endorse it. I couldn't let that fly. So be realistic. Understand what your goals are at the core. Sometimes that's really what you need to get down to is I want to lose a bunch of fat because I feel like I have let myself go and I'm disappointing myself in terms of what I am capable of and what I feel like I can and should look like to the world around me and the people who I wish to engage with romantically. Boom. Now we have a very real core. We have a very real core sitting at the, at the center of that particular idea. So whether I lose 30 pounds over the next three months, whether I lose 20 pounds, 10 pounds, if I come out at the end of those two months looking better than I did at the beginning of it, that's that's a big win. That's a huge win. Also, see my first point. Be patient. This is a longer process. But again, we're, we're about being realistic here right now. So if it is that you only have two months to get something done, talk to your trainer about the timeline and let them tell you a little bit about what can be realistically expected in that timeline. Because I hate to say it, but some things just aren't possible. They just aren't. And it's important to brace yourself for the possibility that what you want in the timeline you have just isn't possible. Sometimes the world that you live in provides you with a certain set of constrictions or constraints that keep things from being as possible as you think they'd be. And that's not your fault. That's not the trainer's fault. That's nobody's fault. It's just how your life is. And we can do what we can to mitigate some of it, but some things just aren't possible. And it's important to be realistic about what you can truly do, what you can truly bring to the table, what you can truly get out of all of this. It's important to have a conversation with your trainer because they're going to have a decent idea as to what really is reasonable and attainable within the time frame you have available. Um, and that's going to make a huge difference uh, in terms of what you expect to get out of it and what you actually will get out of the process. So yeah that's those are my five points i uh, hope you guys found that useful and entertaining um of course go ahead down there throw in some comments let me know if there's any other kind of content you'd love to hear me talk about or any other videos or those sorts of things that you'd like to see me you know, dissect debunk uh, or just generally comment on throw them in the comment section below um i'll also throw my social media stuff down there so my instagram facebook come join up talk to me you know i'm happy to have all sorts of conversations with you guys on all those social media platforms uh just send me dms or, or comment on any of the posts that i put up uh, on either of those platforms uh, also check out my website there's some cool stuff there if anything interests you you know whatever come holler at me talk to me I'm, I'm more than happy to to catch an email from one of you guys and like talk back and forth that that way as well and head under the video hit the subscribe button hit the bell to be notified of all of our future videos i got a lot of cool stuff planned so make sure you stay tuned for all of that and of course make sure you stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together peace <laughs>